So we're live in the studio, McMurray members of Royal Shell, and we've got a special guest tonight. We got Joyce Owens, architect. <laughs> Joyce Owens Studio. It says AJA. What AJO? Yeah. That's architecture. I have, I have two companies: Architecture Joyce Owens and Studio AJO. So Studio AJO is our new interiors. Um, that's the division. interior design. Yeah, part that's of the it. interior design division. Yeah, which there's not a lot of architects that do that, do they? they do. Uh, not like we do. Yeah, it's no. not like you do. Well, yeah. we do it well. Like I said to you a little bit ago, I think I've drank the Joyce Owens Kool-Aid because <laughs> you're fantastic. <laughs> well, so. thank you. I, it's a team. Just like you, we, I have a team. Before I get into everything about you, I'm going to talk about you. I, I mean, right off the bat, just some of the things about you. But we've got some important issues when building and designing a home, especially after Hurricane Ian. And some other things that we're going to talk about, too. But stay tuned for this. Don't don't. Stop watching but because we, we've got some great information that they need to know and people need to know when building a home, designing a home, all those kind of things that you do the best. Thank so, you. But first, you're the principal architect at Architecture Joyce Owens LLC Studio AJO. Correct. You oversee all the design work and meet in depth with all your clients from start to finish. They are my best friend by the end of it. Well, some of the clients <laughs> I've met... Yeah. They just love you. Thank you. They just yeah. love you. I mean, they say you're the best. Um, your client list extends through the United States, United Kingdom, and even Italy. Oh, that's right. First woman recipient in 22 of the gold medal honor awarded by the American Institute of Architects. In the state of Florida. In the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. And you were awarded by the same organization, Medal of Honor for Design. Yeah, that was very important to me. Yeah. I read it. I mean, I just looked at all your accomplishments, and I was blown away. You know, you, you think, well, she's a great architect. But if you really look into what you've accomplished, um, everything about you, I was just so impressed. Before opening your studio here, you were co-founding partner in a London-based firm where, where you worked with clients like Boris Johnson. Prime Minister, ex Prime Minister. Yes, that's incredible. It was incredible. What'd you do for him? A, ha a couple houses. That's amazing. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, amazing man. No and matter what your politics are, yes. amazing man. Yeah, we're not gonna talk politics. <laughs> Darn. No matter what side you're on. <laughs> Fashion icon Alexander McQueen. Yeah. Well, I just learned about him because one of our teammates here, uh, just his girlfriend said, uh, yeah, the shoes, you should get these shoes. They're beautiful. They're like 600 bucks, tennis shoes. So top designer, fashion guru, Isabella Blow, and retail corporation, Tag Heuer, and I'm sure many more. But when I read that, I'm like, oh, man, um, you've been in a lot of books, featured in a lot of magazines, um, nationally, internationally, um, just so many. And uh, graduated from Notre Dame University. Very important. And you won a scholarship to study in Rome in London. And that's how it all started. But before then, you yeah. wanted to be a veterinarian. I did want to be a veterinarian. I read that. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, it was cool. But it was the wrong thing to be doing. So, yeah. 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 Well, I, you're so talented in what you do. You. And like I said, uh, you're a columnist <laughs> for the news press. Or you've been well-known guest speaker of architecture. Um, nationally and internationally. Um, I know there's more. Anything you'd like to add more? Oh, no, that's a lot. <laughs> no, there's you. a lot more. I saw that. That's a um, lot. So getting right into it, why is it important to start with an architect like yourself when building in Southwest Florida um, instead of just going direct to a builder? Um, I think on... The island, Sanibel Captiva, we've been lacking for quite a while an architect in that role. And I think the island sort of forgot what the role of the architect is when they're designing residences. Yeah. And so the architect is um, fundamental in understanding what the clients need. And it's a very personal experience. It's a journey you take together. And so when we meet our clients, we're, you know, we're going to be together for the next two to three years. You're start to finish. We are start to finish. And so we have to answer 
the questions that our clients bring to us. And yeah. so we start early with trying to, I always call it the wish list. We start out with them and they tell us everything they're dreaming about. It might come in the form of words or photographs or a visit to another, their own home or photographs of their, you know, house up north or whatever it is. They, you know, like we really try to draw it out of them. What is it that's their, um, you know, the thing they're looking for when they design a house on Santa Bell. I think so. I think that why you're asking the question, why would you start with an architect rather than a builder? It's because we take that time up front to really spend with our clients, and we're not taking like a design from the drawers, right? Yeah. Like a old set of plans and yeah. redoing them for that um, for that client. We're actually designing it. We're tailoring, you know, the houses for them, and so I think it just gives a client to the a buffer between the builder and them. Yeah. It saves a lot of um, animosity between the parties yeah. because we're, we act as the middleman. Yeah. And so not only do we communicate to the builder what the client wants, but when the, communi- when the communication happens between builder and owner when you're building, the architect is always there as a representative of both parties, yeah. not just the owner, but of both parties. And so we firmly believe in sort of, you know, taking the journey together and, and enjoying the journey. Yeah. And so we try to be good to our builders so they'll be good to us back. Yeah. And so we, we don't take sides. We just, you know, it's always this kind of arbitration idea that we are always, we are always working as a team together. Well, again, the, the clients that I've talked to that have <clears throat> used you, they just love you. So mm-hmm. you've taken them through that journey, and, and they're very happy from, from when you started yeah. To the finish. Yeah. And I see the architecture, how it's changed over the last few years. Some of these properties you don't really see from the road because <laughs> they're hidden before. back. Yeah, <laughs> right. you didn't before, and now you can see them. But I tell you, I was by one the other day on West Gulf Drive on Sanibel, and I'm like going, it just looked, I mean, it is new construction. And you were just finishing the job, and I think it's just finishing up on West Gulf Drive. And it's, it's fantastic. It didn't have any damage. Yeah. Um, and I saw the owners out there at the property. Oh, right. And they were so happy. They said, this is why you choose her. Use mine as an example. You want to use an example of Joyce Owens? This is it. And here's why. After what we just had, especially. Right. Pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And I saw that in a lot of your homes out there. Yeah, we have a number of houses along the beach, on Captiva and on Sanibel, along the beachfront that um, they've all stood, they've all weathered the storm very well. Of course, they have damage, you know, here, there, in places. Yeah. You know, there is no structural damage, and yeah. that's where the money comes when you, after a storm, is when the structure's damaged. Then you have to, you know, shore it up and start building again. But our buildings were designed to allow that water to flow underneath, and so that's what it happened. Yeah. The water flowed underneath and um, just kept right on going. Yeah, know? the ones that were built over the last, I mean, even recent, I mean, there's yeah. homes that I saw 10 years old that didn't really do that, and they were... I mean, that's not too old, but then I come across homes like that you design and I'm like, oh man, there's, I mean, that's how you design a home for what we just went through. Yeah. Because you, you really take mother and nature in mind. I, I heard about, you know, you, you think about shade and different things like that when designing a home. It's not just, you know, the, the inside part and the, just the flow of the home. I mean, that you've got all that, but it's all those other elements you think of too, mother nature. Yeah. You know, our climate. Well, we live in Florida. We live in paradise. Yeah. So we might as well enjoy every minute of living in paradise, including when we're in our homes. But I don't think a lot of architects in the past have really thought about maybe our climate. I mean, I looked on your website and also, too, you get into windows, you get into concrete, you get into all that. I mean, you actually explain why we do this. Right. Why I do this. Why Mm -hmm. I design my homes Mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, and I had a great opportunity, whatever. I was living in England for a long time, for 15 years, which is why I have these international connections. And so when I came back here, I was frustrated with um, what I saw on the islands because everything had that sort of Mediterranean look. And, yeah. you know, I didn't, I don't know, it just didn't feel sort of like, it's almost like they forgot they lived on an island. Yeah. And all I could think of was, oh my God, I've just been in rainy England and now I'm back in sunny Florida and I want every single minute to be, you know, 
like like I I'm overwhelmed by this beautiful weather that we have. Yeah. Even in the summer to me when it's really humid, to me it's still beautiful. I mean you can still be outside if you're protected you know from the sun and so i when i came back um i convinced the news press to allow me to write for the paper yeah and um i have to say for myself it was a really um educational opportunity because i had to learn to put the words like one foot in front of the other to to put out my ideas you know so i could explain very um carefully and very um clearly to to my so people like me can understand well, so not just you. I read that. <laughs> but not just I read you. that those those terms like spectacular and things like that. I mean, I can understand that. <laughs> yeah, right. But I mean, it's just that I, you know, I was I was told, you know, oh, we've tried to do this before in the news press. It never works because when you're a professional, not just architects, any professional that tries to write, they speak in their own language, yeah. and so you can't. We can't do it. It's too risky. Yeah. And. But my editor loved the idea so much, she kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And then, and she very, very kindly explained to me, you have to, your vocabulary cannot be architecture speak. Yeah, yeah. It really has to be like common language. And so it was, it was a great lesson for me to be able to explain then why I felt this is how we should be building yeah. um, in Florida. And now here I am, you know, doing all this great work on Sanibel and Captiva. But you're you not know, just limited Florida. to Sanibel and Captiva. Oh, no, no. I We're mean, because we've South got, Florida yeah, too. we've got some so, amazing waterfront along Fort Myers, Cape Coral, yeah. Naples, all that. And I know you're talking to a lot of different people and helping a lot of different people from yeah. Naples all the way up. Yeah. So you're not right. just here. No, I'm yeah. not just there. Yeah. I, those tend to be my favorite pro- projects yeah. because, um, um, Sanibel is very near and kept are very near and dear to my heart because uh, that's where I came as a kid. Yeah. So like so many people, right? We have memories and family roots there and all that. And so that's, they just happen, happen to be, yeah. Well, again, you can see the difference. You can see yeah. the difference. Not that the homes out there were not beautiful and all that, but you can see the difference in in architecture. And somebody said to me the other day, Mike, don't you think when, when we get through this, this, you know, rebuilding and, bringing Sanibel and Captiva back and Fort Myers Beach, don't you think it's going to be bigger and better? And I, I don't know if it's going to be bigger. It's going to be better because we've got people like you yeah. that are designing a lot of the homes yeah. that are going up. Well, I think there's been a lot of missed opportunities over the years yeah. in how we are building out there, not only in the design, okay, and not taking advantage of our climate, but also in the way we build our houses I, you know, to be strong enough to, you know, we live in a very um, harsh climate. Right? Yeah. It's the sun, okay, and then it's the rain, you know, those torrential rains that yeah. we get. And then, you know, the winds as well. And then all the salt air and all of that stuff. And so the combination of all of those things makes it a very harsh climate. Yeah. And so we have to kind of, you know, evolve as technology and our knowledge um, grows, you know, to to build better. And so I am committed, okay, to be building, I call it Florida rebuilding, stronger, smarter. Yeah. And that's, um, we've actually done an Instagram site now. Yeah, have you been uh, featured a lot about, you know, your homes and why and the design and build and how with climate that we live in and and especially after the hurricane and there's a reason for that yeah well that, that. which is funny because you know i've always been talking about since i came back from uh england how we need to be designing for the climate thinking about sustainability and and ventilation and you know i'm always trying to work with the site that i'm on and the reason is so we save energy i'm yeah. always about trying to save energy by cooling the air before it comes in then you know not putting black roofs on putting white roofs on or foaming the roof or dealing with the insulation and i've been trying to do all of these things okay meanwhile without thinking you know i'm working with the structural engineer to make the foundations of these houses really strong and so um last spring i got to i got the chance to talk at the zonta um event they had a a morning event instead of their tour because of covid they couldn't do the tour and so i got to be one of the speakers and you know i they were like what are the trends and i'm like well we can talk about bathrooms we can talk about kitchens i go but for me do you want to know what my trends are my train trends are about building for the climate for sustainability and for hurricanes yeah and i said it right then and there and i'm like oh isn't that funny that i said that that day because i didn't really talk about hurricanes before and here we are you know i don't think many architects did 
No, you know, I don't think they did. And and we as realtors always said, well, it's in, we're we live in Florida, so you're going to have, you know, water intrusion, your your decks, all you're going to see this, but not really. You don't have to if you do it right. Yeah, if you do it you right. Know? Yeah. So yeah, that's right. I, I saw a lot of that on your yeah. website as far as some of the things that you talk about, which was really cool. Thank you. Um, I just, I, I I said start to finish. Yeah. Um, and that's what I was really impressed by you too. It's not just the drawings of it. You're actually going through the job until it's finished. Yeah. And that's what I mean by start to finish. And then also to the interior part of it, you're yeah. designing furniture around the design that you, you know, worked with these people and, and all those things that they thought about when designing the home. Also, the furniture comes into play too, and all the elements within. You you pick out all the the elements inside the home, the fixtures, the tiles, the the flooring, whatever it might be. Yeah. So we, we we have a three part kind of a three step program, and so one is the house, the architecture of the building, and then we have, and then we do what we call interior architecture. So yeah. those are kitchens and bathrooms, and we do all the built ins, or you know, if it's some pieces, bookcases that you buy. Oftentimes we do custom. Them. We do a lot of custom work, and it's um, very much tailored then to the house. Yeah. And so it's not like you go to the to the store and you know you head down to the local furniture store and bring something in. Oh yeah, that kind of fits. It perfectly fits. Yeah. Right. It's perfectly tailored to that space, and so yeah. we call that interior architecture. And that again is when we're choosing tiles and and you know faucets and whatever with our clients. I mean, it's we're definitely doing this together. And it's not like architects haven't done that in the past. I don't know a whole lot of architects here that do that, but you mm-hmm. know, I think. You know, some of your yeah. most famous architects, oh, yeah, whether Frank it's your Lloyd Frank Lloyd Wright. Think or, Frank Lloyd Wright yeah, here. Hayes Towns. Oh, yeah. Right, exactly. You know, they, they made yeah. furniture, I think, even, and things like that. And, you know, that's a great example because, you know, now we have a furniture division. I mean, yeah. we have been designing furniture, too, like tables. And yeah. um, we've been doing specific pieces for our clients, benches, things like that. And so that's been fun, but we hadn't actually been like procuring the furniture like an interior designer does. And yeah. so that's our, the new, our new department is the Studio AJO. And um, it's been just so fun. It's added so, such a greater dimension to what we're doing because not only do we have to, we don't have to like convince another partner on person like another you know the interior designer or whoever else yeah. you know is there um we're just literally gliding home with the with the clients we're, we're working with them to get everything exactly the way they want it and we get to you know we understand the building and the space and we know where something you know this piece of furniture needs to be high here this needs to be low here yeah. this needs to be you know so that you can see out this doesn't want to draw too much attention to itself but wouldn't it be great if this big piece of art over here did yeah. you know and so like we understand that because we designed the building that's so, that start uh, to finish and and that's what finish. they're expecting and what and the, there's plenty of clients that want that. They just want us or other people to bring them to yeah. that person. Yeah. Because they're coming down here from different places, whether it's this country or overseas, wherever, yeah. and they don't know who to go to. Yeah. Well, not only that, they, oftentimes they make a huge mistake by bringing their architect from up north. Yeah. And um, having lived, and they don't know Florida. They don't know Florida, and they don't get our climate. And I yeah. can tell you, when I came back from England, I it was right. Um, shortly after Charlie came through. And um, I think the biggest lesson that I learned from Charlie was um, all the things that had been done wrong since, like, we started really building in the 70s, 80s, 90s, right? When all of that, you know, I, South Seas comes to mind. I spend a lot of time out on South Seas after Hurricane Charlie. And it was this um, incredible education about what not to do yeah because you know everything was rotten out there yeah. and so charlie just exposed it all and yeah. so i always um kind of make a joke about you know our northern builders came down to florida yeah and they thought they could build just like they built up north and yeah. they did and it didn't work didn't work and so we've learned now that's not what you do you don't use copper pipes you don't do this you don't do that yeah and so i got this great education it wasn't what i thought thought I was going to be doing with my life, going out and assessing buildings out, out on, you know, South Seas. But, you know, what greater way to learn? Yeah. Because I, I had worked in Florida before I went to England. Yeah. And I thought I, I thought I understood a lot more than I did. Yeah. But, you know, there I was looking at these buildings 30, 40 years old, and they were bad. I mean, 
happens all the time. I'm sure you know, as a realtor, you see these houses and you go, whoa. Yeah, well, <laughs> I see a lot of them right now after Hurricane Ian, and I don't yeah. want to get into the damage up on no. uh, that we've seen out there on the no. beach, but you can tell. Mm. You can really tell. And the ones that have been built, the, the newer construction, I mean... I mean, it's such a huge difference. It is a huge difference. So we can thank um, Hurricane Andrew for that. Yeah. Is when our building codes tightened up. And so I'm a big advocate of the building codes. Yeah. Despite the pain that they cause everyone and the cost that is incurred, because we're all for forced to build our houses stronger now. But um, I... I am grateful that we're being forced because then you have to do it. Yeah. Right? And there's you can't you can't slack. You have to do it, and so everybody has to do it. But I really believe in um, this idea of being smarter about doing that too, which is why um, you know this idea of building the spending the money in the foundations, um, which nobody sees, no one's ever going to appreciate it until. A storm comes. Yeah. But then you know that that house is going to be there. But for... really, even after Hurricane Andrew, I don't think a lot of the homes really spent. Not here. It yeah. was on the East Coast. Because... We learned from the East Coast. That's when the Miami-Dade codes came in. Yeah. And then Florida, little by little, adopted. the whole Because state Hurricane of Andrew was 92, wasn't it? Somewhere around there? Yeah, 92. And everybody's mm-hmm. always complained about the codes being so tough, like you're saying. Yeah. But even my brother, who's a developer, has said, you know, we used to th- th- say the codes were too tough. But this is a perfect example of why they weren't too tough. They weren't too tough. And I I always try to go even further. You know, I try to like, okay, our windows are up to a certain standard and they're all hurricane and impact and, you know, window, um, wind resistant, whatever. And but yet we always try to protect them. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, now we're doing those kind of Kevlar roll down screens outside of our impact doors so that your porch is protected. So you have one layer of protection. You have your furniture on the porch and then you then you have your impact windows. And so we're doing a lot of that now, too, that seems to be. And I'm now I'm really convinced after the hurricane, like like everybody has to do that now. I mean, it's crazy not to do that for the small expense that it is you talk about the process how long is the process oh the process is painful yeah Uh, and then no one well you got the permitting process yeah no there's design first there's There's introductions okay then there's like time to think and get us as designers going because it's not this is still an art yeah i mean i've you know i feel like i've spent the last four months talking about hurricanes and resiliency and you know foundations and like how to build stronger all the time yeah and yet what I do is still an art. Yeah. And so there has to be that creative time that allows us, you know, the flexibility of letting our minds create a home yeah. or a business, whatever we're doing. Because we do both homes and commercial work. We yeah. don't just do I've seen residence. some of your commercial work. I saw a church even. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> it's a nice church, Oh, it's it? beautiful. Yeah. 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 So, Good um, stuff. Thank you. Good thank stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah. And so... Um, I just feel like we're getting there. We're yeah. learning. And I and I hope that those buildings, I did an Instagram post recently, and I put the four buildings, you know, that are kind of right there on West Gulf Drive on there. And I'm like, our buildings are still standing. Yeah, they know? are. And I call myself a coastal architect. So what else do I need to say? Yeah. If I want to call myself a coastal architect, those buildings better be standing. Yeah, I've seen some of your homes going up right now are just absolutely gorgeous. Even the ones that were in the middle of construction still. I mean, right after the storm, they just resumed construction. Yep. I mean, it wasn't really, there was debris around from probably other homes, yeah. but <laughs> I mean, your homes were ready to go. Yeah. And they're going. Yeah. So I thought it, it it's just great to see. Um, great. One thing, has your approach with design and building changed since Hurricane Ian? Never. Now it's only made me more resolute yeah. not to change and to be very adamant with our clients that they need to invest. Yeah. If you're going to build, you know, a four, five million dollar home on the beach, you know, up to 10 million, whatever you're going to spend, you know, you, you've got to do it right. You yeah, if you're going to if you're going to spend that kind of money, do it right. You can't cut corners. Yeah. And and for me, I don't know how technical we want to get here, but I'm I don't want to ever see a piling house on the beach again. I think yeah. it all has to be these kind of deeper foundations that we're working with. Um, you know, the the pilings are below grade. Yeah. And then um, and then we put the grade beam around those pilings and then we start to build up from there and we build so that um, if you're the beach and I'm the home and the, and the walls are 
are perpendicular to the beach. Mm -hmm. And so when that water comes in, those walls, we call them shear walls, they're, they're not going anywhere. They're yeah. very strong. They're very, you know, they're, they're block walls full of concrete and steel. And when that water comes through, it washes right through. Yeah. And those walls stay in place. Yeah. The walls that are parallel to the beach, those are sacrificial walls. So yeah. blow out construction. And those will go. Yeah. And that's the intent is yeah. that they do go. Yeah. And so um, I feel that um, our islands have learned a lot of lessons about yeah. Not just the islands, I shouldn't say that. Our whole area. Yeah, our whole area, Fort yeah. Myers and, you know, Cape Coral, you know, Pine Island. All of us have learned that, you know, there's a reason they tell us to build above flood. Yeah. And we can't be really investing in that area below. You know, if it's a, if it's hit the flood area, we, we really can't be putting... You, you shouldn't know, be um, having habitable space down there i guess no beautiful rooms yeah. and investing money sure it's fine if you need to put your exercise room down there yeah you know you're going to store your kayaks down there yeah. absolutely why not but an extension you know, of the pool under there too that's Things what like i that. love to do yeah that's I've one of my some of those that's one of my smarter that you've had. yeah yeah I really take advantage of that. I call it free real estate. Yeah, and you're living outdoors, hopefully. Uh, well, that's so, my goal, is to get you to be outside. Yeah. And so it's shaded. It's pleasant. We create these like spaces between the house. Because we're trying to get the water to come through yeah. on a day-to-day -day base, basis, when we leave them open, it's amazing, that wind tunnel that is created Created. There. And so when you're there in the middle of the summer and you're standing in our breezeway, you're like, oh, my God, yeah. the breeze is so beautiful. Yeah. And you're thinking, and wait, it's, it's summer? still out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's summer. And so it's really nice how we've really rediscovered that area down there. And we're really giving it back to the to the clients and saying, this is free, free real estate now. That's great. So, yeah. you got to look on the website to understand quite ex you know, what we're talking about. Oh, but, I've yeah. been looking all day yeah. and before that, too. But uh, yeah. So we're almost done. But... Uh, so what are some of your favorite projects? You can't name names, but I know a lot of them are on <laughs> Sanibel and Captiva. And I know some of them are going up right now. I know of one up on Captiva, which I thought was really cool. It's got like a, an old 1913, 1917 home. Yeah. And it was brought over from like Yuseppa. Boca Grande, Yuseppa. Yeah. A lot of history with it. Yeah. And just an amazing home inside. And then... You designed a home guest, behind it. The guest house. The guest house. But that's the big house. <laughs> that's the, It's dwarfing the cottage, yeah, yes. But it looks over top. But it just looks right the over the top. It's off to the side, and it looks right. has a perfect view right out to the beach. And blending that architecture with that one, but new and exciting. Yeah. That's a really, really fun project. And I will tell you, I am, a, I am at heart a modern architect. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I don't always get to be a modern architect down here because... This is not Miami Beach or yeah. Sarasota, the Lido. It's not, we're not there. Yeah. We're somewhere else. And so I have had to um, learn what my clients want, and I had to learn how to do more traditional architecture. You've done a great job of blending that in with that island that is 70% preserve and the conservation yeah. and the vegetation yeah. and, and protecting that and understanding that and all that good stuff. You've done a great job blending that in. Thank you. Well, it's yeah. a lot of the, you know. I, it's but still making it fun. Yeah, always exciting. making it fun. Always making fun, it fun and exciting. Yeah. But a lot of that has to do with like understanding the vegetation that's yeah. here too. Yeah. And knowing where to put which vegetation so that it doesn't hide the house, it enhances the architecture. Yeah. And so those projects are always um like the most fun when I get to work with the landscape architect. There's a couple of landscape architects I work with on the island, and um, I just, it's so much fun to work with them because I don't know every plant. I don't know how every plant will do on the north side or the south side or in the salt or not in the salt, but I say what I want. I say, here I want something um, sculptural, right? And I think it should be a palm, some sort of sculptural palm. And they'll say, this one will do best here. Yeah. And then I get told which one it is. And then, you know, we're creating the hedges on the side. And I'm like, give me something other than Clusia on the side, you know, because I, I see it a lot. And it, it's very good. Okay, it's a good um, native plant. But, um, you know, sometimes we put in black bamboo for a bit of drama, yeah. you know. And so, like, I know, I know shapes and understand what I want, but they know how it how it's going to fare in, in the location it is. Um, 
But yeah, so you asked about my favorite projects. So I have to say my favorite projects are always the modern ones. Okay, those are tend to be my favorite ones. But I got to tell you, like the one we just talked about on Captiva, I was in that project because it's midway through construction. And it is, it is, I can't tell you, it takes your breath away when you go inside and you and the space that's been created. It's much more traditional inside. Yeah. I mean, everything I do has a, like a contemporary spin on it because I've learned to use modern architecture to make it better than the traditional. Yeah. So I know where to break the rules of traditional architecture because I'm a modern architect. Yeah. That's a really bizarre thing to say, but it really works in what I did because when you look at that guest house, for example, it's quite unique because um, there's a home, there's the public part of the house where the kitchen and the living room are, and then there's a walkway across, and then there's the pool in a courtyard, and then the, the far end of the house towards uh, Captiva Drive, is, yeah. um, it's all, that's all the bedrooms. But it has its own nice media room and a little kitchenette, and, you know, so if you need a drink in the middle of the night, you don't have to go all the way across to the other main part of the house. But that house is, I can't wait to take you inside. Yeah, it's going really, There is nothing like it yeah. on Captiva, because it's, it has those high ceilings with those... Um, um, custom wood trusses yeah and so you get the trusses you can see those trusses exposed inside the house with the high ceiling i mean it's like it's like a cathedral yeah know? that's what the island is, has been missing yeah it really has been missing there's been plenty of people come out there yeah. and we've lost them to other markets you know they love sanibel and captiva but you know i mean and i love it too we all love it yeah. um and it's sad what we're going through but you know to to repeat what my client said mike it's going to be better and it's people like yourself that are going to make it better yeah. i mean there's that whole community will make it better um i hope but so. the new people coming in are definitely going to appreciate your work and i'm just you know i'm drinking that kool-aid enjoy selling this kool-aid <laughs> i'm gonna spike it for yeah. you <laughs> can we do that next <laughs> anything else Anything else tonight? No, no, this has been great. I appreciate Thank you coming you. in because this no. is a big thing. Architecture yeah. is such a big thing. Design is such a big thing, especially when you get into these kind of price ranges. Yeah. You get what you pay for. You do absolutely get if what you, you pay for. If you want just a regular architect, yeah. there's plenty of them out there. Yeah. You know, but the good ones, you get what you pay for. It's just like anything. Thank you. And I, I believe I've looked at your work and you're, you, you get what you pay for when you, you. I do try to bring someone. value. I you mean, definitely do. And I, I try to explain to um, our clients, even though, because we do walk them through from start to, yeah. you know, from the day we meet till the day we're having cocktails, yeah. you know, whatever that is, yeah. two years later, three years later, yeah. we're out on the deck having cocktails together, yeah. that um, it's almost negligible what they paid us considering the, you know, the mistakes they didn't make, Right. The selections that we've made, the finishes, because, oh, the expensive one didn't quite fit in their budget. But but I can tell you, we know where to find the substitute yeah. that nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. Yeah. Because that's what we do all day long. Yeah. And so we know how to adjust their budget, you know, how to help the builders um, not make mistakes, uh, often working with the builders to ask the builders for their help. So that there are no mistakes made along the way. I yeah. mean, we, we work very closely with our builders. Yeah. We really like our builders. I and mean, I know you've got a lot of great ones that you work yeah, with. We do. We have you know, a lot of great builders. But you work with them. You yes. are part of that team. They yeah. are part of your team. Yeah. And that's what makes a great yeah. team. And we count on the builders and all the subcontractors. Yeah. I mean, uh, our relationship with our with their subcontractors, who are, you know, they're their subcontractors, but they work so closely with us yeah. i mean we go directly to them and say we want to do this how would we do that yeah and then you know whether it's the carpenter or the electrician or the plumber i mean we go right to them to ask the questions like like this we want to try to do something that no one's ever done before yeah. and so like how would we go about doing that and they love it they love being part of that process from the beginning i know so, as a realtor um, i'm excited about it because whenever i get the chance to sell it yeah. I know I'm going to get a big dollar for it <laughs> because of everything you've done yeah. and the builder's done yeah. and the people and the, the time that went into it, the quality that went into it. Yeah. And you do get it back if you do you it do right. Get it back. You do. It pays. And it's well, the enjoyment it's, it's of value. it, everything. I mean, it's value. And I yeah. always am, um, you know, apart from talking about designing for the climate, you know, which is one of my mantras, I'm also, I've always been, you know, 
talking about the value that an architect brings to the project. Yeah. And I think for a long time it's been forgotten. You know, we've been sort of overwhelmed by developers that are just saying us telling us, oh, you got to do it this way, you got to do it this way, yeah. because this is where the money, cut the money, cut the money, yeah. cut the money. No. And then, you know, a good, strong architect will convince them, put your money here, yeah. and you'll get your money back. And I want to say that very clearly. Put your money with a good architect on your house, you'll definitely get your money back. I've always said that with landscaping, too. Landscaping is so key, I it think. Is. That it is. That and the architecture. Yeah. I mean, is that, there's that thing, curb appeal, they talk about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but hopefully I mean, our curb appeal goes inside and yeah, outside and, yeah. yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, that's well, what Well, I appreciate I'm you coming in tonight. Thank you. Why, well, so, thank you for the invite. Joyce Owens. Um, her information is going to be down below and whatever we post, uh, wherever we post it, we'll have your website and just information about you and just appreciate you coming in. I know it's late and you. appreciate you taking the time, but yeah. you work hard. So <laughs> I know. thank you. So, okay. so do you. We usually hug, not shake hands, <laughs> but we're across the table. So yeah, and I'm not that tall, am I? <laughs> yeah. But we're going to be boosting this on YouTube and different channels and all that good stuff. So, um, we're getting the word out for you. Okay. Yeah, thank so, you. I really appreciate so it. So look Joyce Owens up. She's the best. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for coming in.